Quick Slants is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's basically what you just listened to from 2 to 6 from Felger and Mass. No, you're not there yet. It's going to take some time because Rome wasn't built in the day and the Patriots were not torn down to a 4-13 and team overnight. They got work to do and they are about to get after that work, it seems, by re-signing their own guys. Well, I mean, sad trombone? We'll talk about it. Uh, in doing so, we will bring in Phil Perry to chat with Phil Real quick, I want you to give me one big smile, one sad face, and one developing opinion. Uh, the big smile is Micah Wenu. Everybody knew this was a glaring need for them. Core guy, you bring him back. Sad face is the fact that they haven't added a starting caliber receiver to this point, in my opinion. Nice that you bring Kendrick Bourne back coming off an injury. Nice that you have Pop Douglas. You need more there. You need more there, and I'm talking before the draft. And then my developing opinion is, what do you do with Jacoby Brissett? Tom, are you starting him week one no matter what? Or are you just looking at him and saying, well, at least we have the option now to start him if we really need to? But we're probably going to be playing a young quarterback there because it's a strong quarterback class. We got the three overall pick, for God's sakes. Yeah, that is very much TBD. How actually they deploy the newly weaponized Jacoby Brissett. We have a game plan, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out! Wish list, missed list. We're going to get to those. Jacoby returns. Later, Mac. Polls, comments. You guys are always so good at contributing for those. Um, meanwhile, though, here's the latest on Calvin Ridley. The Patriots reportedly. Have an aggressive offer on the table, Adam Schefter said. But Ridley prefers at this juncture to remain in Jacksonville. Also, the Jaguars would prefer to wait on a new deal because their compensation to the team they acquired Ridley from initially, it will go from a second rounder if they move him before Wednesday to a third rounder if they do so after Wednesday. A little convoluted there, but it does pay them some reason to foot drag with re-signing um, Ridley if they're so desiring. The team has needs, Phil. They do, and listen, the Patriots might have to wait until tomorrow, until the league year officially starts to figure out what exactly it is that Calvin Ridley wants to do. I think it's worth mentioning the Jaguars have already signed two wide receivers this free agency period. They signed Gabe Davis, formerly of Buffalo. They also signed Devin DuVernay, and so I wonder if that – is a little bit of a sign as to how much they're going to be willing to spend on somebody like Calvin Ridley. Tom, the Patriots have so much money. <laughs> they have so many resources to allocate to this position if they so choose. This is clearly the top guy. To me, you could use him inside. You could use him outside. He would make your young quarterback's life much easier. This would be an investment in that player even more so than it would be in Ridley himself for those reasons. Mm -hmm. I would say overpay the guy if you really have to. Well, Calvin Ridley is a Nelson Aguilar. No, no, he's not. But the Patriots overspent on Nelson Aguilar a couple years ago just because he was there, and it didn't work out so good. So maybe there's a little bit of – it's a cautionary tale. Meanwhile, we'll get back to that. Scared money don't make money, Tom. <sighs> Scared money sometimes loses incredible amounts of money. I've been there. Meanwhile, <laughs> back where it started, Jacoby Brissett. Here's his last three seasons, 30 games, 16 starts, 6 and 10. He completes passes at a good clip, and he's got a 2-1 to one passing touchdown to interception ratio. Phil – as far as you're concerned, they got their guy. Yeah, this is a guy that makes all kinds of sense because he's familiar with the scheme that you're going to implement here in New England. He's familiar with Alex Van Pelt. He's familiar with T.C. McCartney, who's the new Patriots quarterbacks coach. He's a guy, Tom, that is thought to be one of the better locker room guys in the NFL, and you can roll your eyes at that. You can shake your head at that. I was. It does matter. These are human beings, and again, if you do plan on bringing in a young quarterback, having somebody who's been in a variety of different systems, everything from New England to the McShanahan scheme that he ran in Cleveland, I think that would be helpful for whoever you bring in here at that position who's young and needs the sage opinion of a veteran. That's what Jacoby Brissett will give you. I wonder if this actually pennies them into having to go quarterback at number three. We'll also discuss that on Tom Curran's Patriots Talk Pod. Meanwhile, a slew of quarterbacks have been on the move across the National Football League. You got your big ticket item in Kirk Cousins. You got my guy in Gardner Minshew, who I thought would be a guy who could win some games with. Russell Wilson, thanks, but no thanks on him. Marcus Mariota, he's a Jaden Daniels um, supervisor. 
Could be better words than that. Uh, Jameis Winston, you can see him all right there. Um, do the Patriots miss out on anybody? I'll take this one. Yeah, they, I mean, if you wanted to win this year, if you wanted to be exciting, if you wanted to be scintillating, Gardner Minshew would have been a better play than Jacoby Brissett. And he's only making about $4 million more a year. And I'm not saying that Gardner Minshew is the second coming of anyone. However, he is a guy who went to the Pro Bowl this year, Phil. Oh, boy. We're going to go there? You really want to go there? Did you watch Gardner Minshew in that Germany game? I know the Patriots looked worse. Their you got offense a win somehow in the house. looked worse. How did Jacoby Brissett look Ten last year? Ten points on How the international stage. How did Jacoby Brissett look when they played the Patriots last year? Jacoby, that was two years ago. Last year, Jacoby Brissett, given every opportunity, was actually fantastic. And in the opportunities that he got last year, Washington, and two years ago, that game against the Patriots, by far and away his worst game that season. He ended the year with about a 90 quarterback rating. That's essentially Minshew-esque, if not better, Tom, and for a much lower cost. And he's going to, I think, embrace his role as a number two. We'll see, but I think he will a little bit better maybe than even Gardner Minshew might. I'm very unhappy about Minshew, but there's still a chance for Jimmy. He hasn't signed anywhere. Meanwhile, a guy who did re-sign, Mike Amwenu. Three-year, $57 million deal, including $38 million guaranteed. Queer priority for the New England Patriots. It gets a $22.5 million signing bonus. Phil, keeping your home grown here, you like this move a lot. I do too, and why wouldn't you? Yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't. This is the Packer way, right? Elliot Wolf, we understand his Packers background. We understand what those roots are. And their MO is to identify their quote-unquote core guys and re-up them. And that's what they've done here, Tom. The stunning thing to me is the Patriots as a franchise since 2014, or players taken in the draft since 2014, only five of them have signed Long-term extensions with the Patriots. Owenu is the fifth. They need to start hitting more in the draft and continuing with this MO, whether it's Packers, Patriots, whatever it is, you have to identify those core guys because you drafted well and then pay them. Agreed. That is the nature of the business. Everybody is not replaceable at all times, and I think the Patriots under Bill Belichick got to a point where they said, we can coach up just about anybody, and sometimes they couldn't. Meanwhile, here are... Some of the fellas who are out the door. We have uh, Jaguars, sixth round pick, Devontae Par uh, for Mac Jones. Uh, Devontae Parker has gone to the Eagles. Um, Mac Wilson has gone to the Cardinals. Mike Jasicki also has gone to the Cincinnati Bengals. In the words uh, of, who was that dude? Oh, Christopher Walken. We fail without him! <laughs> <laughs> From Wedding Crash. Sorry. I sure. couldn't remember the guy's name. Sure. Yeah, the painting was a gift, Tom. Uh, yeah, listen, I, I think the I think Devontae Parker going out, I think should be encouraging to people for obvious reasons, but it also it opens up a spot for them to clearly add a guy that can play on the outside, that can be their quote unquote number one. This is a sign not only that they were done with Devontae Parker, but they're they're opening up space to add someone else, whether that's in free agency, again, which I I feel it should be with Calvin Ridley. Yep. Or in the draft. Uh, meanwhile, nobody has been hotter than Phil. This was Phil's multi-step plan for making the Patriots better in the offseason. This was a month ago. Well, a couple weeks. Uh, signed Calvin Ridley. Hasn't been done yet. On Winu, back. Henry, back. The set in. Tag Kyle Duggar. I am right there with you on those last four. If they, Phil is on fire. Phil, that's already, to me, a star on your forehead, which one of those would you see as the most likely? I know they're talking to Ridley, but would you still give yourself a W if it was Fuller, for instance, as a corner, which is a sneaky need here? It is a sneaky need. I think you need somebody opposite Christian Gonzalez. I think you need a pass rusher as well, Tom. So Daniil Hunter might actually be the most expensive name on that list when it's all said and done. If you could end up with, Tom, two of those four names remaining on that list, that, to me, is a very solid offseason. It gives you a foundation to be a much improved team moving forward. Are you going to make the Super Bowl? No, you're not. You're not anywhere close to that. But are you going to give the fans a product in 2024? You are. And so you have to work towards, I think, adding two more of those names. Speaking of the fans, let's go to from the stands right now. Poll question I burped out at you folks on Twitter today was, Jacoby Brissett signed to be the Patriots bridge quarterback. Was this the best best? Approach, yes, no brainer. 75% taking it. Drake May, day one starter, 11.1% .1 of you. 
Believe it or not, there wasn't a lot of support from Mac Jones sticking around on a low-budget contract. Meanwhile, here's what you guys had to say. Jacoby should start until AVP is up to speed as a play caller and the offensive line plus wide receivers are clicking. Most important final step is fully prepared. Bay is final, fully prepared and then May should start. I think that's pretty much what everyone's working on. Should I trade it for Fields? Next. I love Cousins, but if they signed him to the deal he ended up with, it would be more than a bridge year. Agreed. It would impede them from drafting quarterback to begin with that early. Agreed. I was just happy. I... Traffic, nasty. Don't have to hear you suggesting Minshew anymore. Meanwhile, how is this different from what Bill was doing? Where is the different approach? Well, I'd say, Phil, for one, they re-signed one of their players who was hitting free agency. Additionally, they brought in a veteran quarterback, which might have come in handy last year instead of your Matt Corral, Ian Book procession of flotsam and jetsam. They cut their losses on a, a, a few lost causes, you know, whether it's Mac Jones, uh, which – Bill Belichick might have been willing to move on from him after last year if he was still here, no doubt. But how about Devontae Parker? Tom, that was a head-scratching extension they gave him at the time last year. It's even more confusing now. I give the current front office credit for understanding the mistakes that were made and moving on. That was a DeAndre Hopkins. I hope you don't feel bad that we talked to DeAndre Hopkins extension for Devontae Parker. At least it felt that way. Meanwhile, after the break, I'm going to slap you in the face with some reality. Okay. Potential brought to you by Dr. Matthew Lepresti. Look younger, feel younger, get your hair back with Leonard Hair Transplant Associates. Here were some of the projections for the Patriots players that are coming back on new deals. Pro Football Focus does a great job with this. 4 and 65 for Wenu. Got him for 3 and 57. Eh. Uh, then you have the transition tag going to Duggar. 4 and 53 is his projection. Um, 2, 12.5, 3, 9, uh, 27 million. So a little less than imagined for Hunter Henry, who was the second best free agent on the market at the tight end position. And then you see the other two with Uche and Kendrick Bourne. Bourne signing a contract very similar to the one he had a few years ago. Uh, meanwhile, it is time now for my slant. Watch out! And I've been hearing a lot of this on the radio today. Why didn't they do anything? Why were they aggressive? Well, the league year begins tomorrow, and the Patriots have already screwed it up. We knew going into 2023 that Henry, Duggar, and Wenu, those were the priorities. All of them had good years this past year, as did Bourne, pre-injury, before he was, uh, actually after he was exiled last year. The Patriots re-signed all of those guys. Now, none of them are all pros, and any, had they left, would have needed to be replaced, and there were really no legitimate upgrades in free agency to do so. So the Patriots did the right thing here. Meanwhile, do you think Bill Belichick would have re-signed on Winner or Tag Duggar when he virtually never retained players into their second contracts? If you didn't notice what happened the last few months, it's a pretty bad team. They went through eight quarterbacks. They had no right tackle. They had to send a Winner out there to do that. They let one good wide receiver go to bring in two bad ones. Bill half reveled in the crumbling of Mac Jones and never bothered to sign a veteran backup. They were the worst offense in football because they couldn't find their ass with both hands in the draft or free agency for years. We're really going to talk about buyer's remorse with the guys they brought back? They needed to bring these guys back because they are, on offense, the best players they had. And they aren't even pro bowlers. So what do people expect to happen in free agency? I think there was some, like, test tube they were going to make a quarterback in. Patriots need to take their medicine, eat their vegetables, build the team, some of the things they found in this 4-13 and wreckage can be salvaged. It doesn't mean it wasn't a wreck. I, of course, am the guy who thought they could win a lot of games last year. Phil! Yeah, you are. I was, uh, I was a lot there, but agree with me. Listen, if I'm a Patriots fan right now, I am reserving my right to be highly upset if we get to the end of the week and they haven't added a receiver that can play that and they good. haven't added a tackle who can play Michael, opposite Michael Wenham. I... I I really feel as though that's okay. Tom, they came into the offseason with among the most cap space. They, were, they yes. were first or second in cap space, depending on where you look. In the NFL, they have the resources. They have the needs. The players are out there. Make it work. No? Tackle, wide receiver, corner. Got to have him. We haven't even mentioned Antonio Gibson, meanwhile, because, well, he's a bit player. But tackle, wide receiver, corner. Hit those, and maybe people could talk about 
little less about a lack of aggressiveness. Meanwhile, we got another poll for you today because, well, it's free agency and you guys need to be heard from. From the stands 2.0. Bonus! Patriots locked down their own guys, which in your opinion is surprisingly solid start. Fine. Not that impressed. Disappointing status quo. We got comments too. 603 me. Fine. Only on when it was a necessity. Warren signing a complete meh at best. Traveling hiker, not impressed one bit. All that money and they've literally done nothing. I mean, I obviously loved it on when it was staying, but beyond that, so they've literally done something. Uh, solid start, not surprising at all. The org finally trying to make, not trying to make three left turns when everyone else is going right. Next up, Nate, nothing moves the needle. Go see the doctor. They didn't get better by retaining a bunch of, a, of, uh, of guys. LOL, so not a good start. I shouldn't have picked this one. I'm having a hard time reading that one. All right, Phil, uh, here's your Mac Jones full screen. We're going to seg segue to our guy, Mac, um, who has been shipped to Jacksonville. Here's what he did in his career as a Patriot. Take a look at those numbers and then listen to our friend Thor Nystrom, who around this time in 2021 gave an outstanding review of what the Patriots could and should expect from Mac Jones and why they shouldn't deal up to draft him. The Patriots are in a tough spot because you've got to get up a ways there um, unless you're cool with Mac Jones. I, I truly do not believe that Mac Jones will be the third pick. If you like him enough, I mean, you're going to have to decide what when the juice is worth the squeeze there. For me, I'm not moving up, not for Mac Jones. If it's if it's for Trey Lance or Justin Fields, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buck up some future first-round picks or, or pony up whatever I need to move up. Now, Mac Jones is good against pressure. And his accuracy in the short to intermediate range is very, very good. He is going to run a system effectively. I do believe that. Um, but there's a difference for me between a guy whose ceiling is a very good game manager and a guy whose ceiling is a guy that changes the game. All right. So there are some nits to pick if you want to talk about Trey Lance or dealing with pressure. I think that Mac did initially deal well with pressure, but that pretty much distilled down is, I think, what most of us felt about Mac Jones. Take him. High floor, mediocre to low ceiling. Yeah, very good game manager. I think you and I, Tom, both were sort of in the same boat where we looked at Mac Jones and said, if he could be Kirk Cousins, could he be Kirk Cousins? Because if he can, especially on a rookie contract, that has all kinds of value. Then you could build around him. You can spend on weapons. You can spend on offensive line. And your team could actually look pretty good. The thing was, that probably was his ceiling. They didn't do all the other stuff that they needed to do to foster that talent that was there and we saw the results. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that coming up after the break with Brian Hoyer leading off the block in just a moment. Meanwhile, Tom Cameron's Patriots. Okay, we got one out for you. It's on the free agent moves so far, and we will be updating the pod throughout the week. So if you don't subscribe, go ahead and do that. That way they pop right into your inbox whenever you're looking for intel. Coming up after the break, more Mac Jones talk, and we have questions to pose about his future with the Jaguar. Brian Hoyer joined us on the Patriots Talk podcast last week. He was awesome, and you're going to love to hear an inside account of what happened in 2022. Okay, obviously, you know, you guys witnessed it as training camp went on, and I think there was a lot of shifts trying to take place, and, and there was shifts trying to take place with kind of no – path, the clear path. I, I guess that's the best way I would put it was, you know, you were trying to get away from the system that had been run here for so long, but there also wasn't anyone who had been in another system that was trying to implement there. I guess, basically, look, I've played in a lot of different offenses and what we were trying to do that year was kind of a hodgepodge of a bunch of different things without a clear cut person who had ever run those things before. And I think that frustrated a lot of people, especially guys who had played in that offense for a long time because I would say this, it was a blessing and a curse to be coached by Josh McDaniels for as long as we were, because Josh demanded so much out of you that you had to learn the ins and outs of everything and the real, the reasons and the rules. And when you go from that to a system that really doesn't have a solid foundation, it doesn't have a lot of rules and all those things, the guys who have been coached that way for so long, we were kind of looking at like, well, how, how do you want us to do this? Mm -hmm. And it was funny, the guys who had never really been in that system before, they didn't know the difference. You know what I mean? Like they were like, oh, this is this is just what it is. It's pretty well established already. 2022 was a fairly dysfunctional year 
but to hear somebody who was in the room articulate it, it just uh, does underscore just the level of adversity the offensive players were facing, and Mac Jones in particular. Yeah, and I think some of the players, Mac Jones especially, um, were criticized for maybe wanting to know the why of, of how things break down, why concepts should work the way that Matt Patricia, Joe Judge, and others wanted them to work. But the way Hoyer explains it, where there are no rules, no rules, you just, you're just sort of flying by the seat of your pants and you're looking at a play on a piece of paper and you're just supposed to run it the way it is right mm -hmm. there. That's not how modern NFL offenses run. I'm sorry, even Tom Brady as a young player had questions. You have to have people in these roles that can answer player questions. Speaking of answering questions, Phil, will Mac Jones start and win a playoff game in the NFL before his career ends? Wow. Uh, I think I'm going to take the under on that, at least as it stands right now. Especially, Tom, I don't love the situation he's going to in Jacksonville. You're behind a young, entrenched, number one overall pick starter there. I know he's going to be a free agent after this coming season. I think you have to hope. You don't wish for injury if you're Mac Jones, but you have to hope you get a chance to start a game or two, and then you end up getting an opportunity that you like a year from now. I'd say it's probably 250 to 1. So I'd, I'd put 10 on that. Uh, meanwhile, why is this free agent shopping period different than 2021 when the Patriots broke the bank? Uh, it, it shouldn't be all that different, in my opinion. And I think they actually did the right thing in 2021 when they broke the bank, because even though that didn't have long-term success, I don't think it was because of the spending they did in free agency, Tom. They improved by three games that year and made the playoffs. Matthew Judon was a hit. Kendrick Bourne was a hit. Hunter Henry's a hit. You know, you can go on down the line. You're, you're never going to hit on every free agent. But I think you can use it to get back to respectability. And so they should be doing that right now. We now know that the Minnesota Vikings are entering the season. As we speak, with Sam Darnold as their quarterback, there's going to make, be some moves there. But the easiest move for them to make is a sweetheart deal to get up to number three and extract the third overall pick. Phil, do you think the ship has sailed on the Patriots trading down? What with the signing of Jacoby Brissett? I don't think it's completely sailed, but something drastic, in my opinion, would have to happen with Drake May and or Jane Daniels between now and draft night for them to move off of that spot. I think they're probably leaning in that direction towards taking one of those guys. I agree. That is the default. They have to be moved off that spot with cause. Stick around for early edition.